the bigger and stronger the network they have, it's only going to do their business and their and their sector and their industry good things. Business of Architecture UK, episode 27. Hello and welcome Architect Nation. This is the podcast for architects where you'll discover tips, strategies and secrets for running an impactful and profitable design practice. On Thursday the 11th of October 2018, the Business of Architecture UK will be having our next live event at UNI offices in Howitt Place in Victoria, London. We're going to be having a panel discussion with leading architects and entrepreneurs and industry thought leaders and we will be discussing making money, profit, cash flow and making impactful architecture. Tickets have now gone on sale and the early bird tickets have now finished, but you can still grab tickets. The link is in the information below. So just click on that and it'll take you to an Eventbrite page and I look forward to seeing you there. Hello and welcome to the Business of Architecture UK. I'm Ryan Willard and this week I was speaking with Richard Zeff, who is actually an estate agent and has begun his own estate agency um, training and development online and educational programs and live seminars. And it was really interesting talking to Richard as he is in a very experienced salesperson. He understands the property market from a very unique perspective, which I think is really vital for for architects to begin to understand. And he's collaborated and created strategic alliances with um, architects in the past. And in this interview, he goes into detail about how architects and estate agents and other property professionals can partner up and be very powerful referral allies. Hello, and welcome to the Business of Architecture UK. I'm your host, Ryan Willard. And today, I have the very good fortune to be speaking with Richard Zeff. So welcome to the show, Richard. Thanks, Ryan. It's great to be here. And so, Richard, you're an estate agent. You've had 25 years of experience working in estate agents. You've had various business experience. You've run your own estate agencies. Yep. And now you've just started a new company called EA Life, which is a training and development company for estate agents. Correct. So uh, you've got a wealth of business experience. And I was really keen to, because I mean, you've, we've been discussing and talking about the relationship of, uh, you know, architects and estate agents and what sort of powerful allies they can be. And I, and I really wanted to have this conversation with you because you've got such a wealth of sales experience. You understand the property industry and all the other kinds of partners and allies that kind of fit around that and also you're doing something very innovative with marketing um, and developing your own sales company so let's start off by you giving me a little bit of a background and for our listeners what is your new endeavor and then we can go on and talk a little bit about how architects and estate agents can actually be very very powerful allies in terms of uh, winning work for each other and yep. those kinds of strategies sure so the new venture that I've uh, that I've just uh, started is um, is a company, as you say, which is is been formed to train, support, develop, and consult estate agents right. going forward. Um, it's an holistic approach to training where we look at anybody that's been in the industry, whether it's five minutes or fifteen years or longer and support and encourage them in a way that has a long lasting impact and difference on their results that they can achieve, not just in an immediate hustle type basis, but also for the long term of their businesses. Right, so it's long term thinking, you're kind of leading a, a culture shift, if you like. Yeah, I think it's, it's the balance, like any industry, um, it's, it's the balance between people appreciating that you've got to be thinking long term in any business mm. and balancing that with income today income this week income this month clients now clients in three six months time and what are we doing to open the the, the doors that are going to bring the clients in in three years time and in yeah. five years time yeah and so for you um how have you worked with architects in the in the past how do you see that estate agents and architects can be working in alliance? What kind of strategies? 
Well, it's, 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 it's such a great question because the um, estate agent industry is going through a tremendous change at the moment. Mm. Uh, there was a recent report out by one of the um, big international accountancy firms which said that something like uh, one in five of the uh, 16,000 plus high street estate agents in the UK at the moment are in some kind of financial distress. Um, and a few other concerning figures for people like me who are in the industry that mm. it's time to sort of uh, stand up and take note of. And the service level, the way that estate agents have performed over the last 20 years, while it has improved and increased to a degree, there's still a huge missing and there's still a big opportunity for companies to come along and really embed themselves as part of the local community. And by doing that, they should be connected to fellow professionals. You know, it's probably only really the last five, ten years at best that estate agents, as well as people like lawyers and solicitors, have realised mm. the huge gain in them having strong, positive networks and relationships. Yeah. And another industry would be architects. I have it with the many companies and branches and offices of estate agents that I've been in to over the last 25 years that you could probably count on one hand the amount of high street agents if we left this office today and we'd walk into and ask them could you please give us the details of your best two or three local architects because we've just bought a house through you and we want to do a big extension um, there's not going to be many that could give you one decent reputable company who knows the local authority and understands planning requirements let alone be able to give you two or three yeah but if you did ask them for solicitors details or mortgage brokers details they'll have at least one if not two or three and even decorator um and i think as estate agents we should have that you yeah. know uh, architecture is a huge impact on property um and there's a, an obvious relationship yeah that could grow and develop quite quickly yeah I and mean, when i first started up my practice one of my first things to do actually was to start cold calling i went through the i kind of established a a, a set of postcodes of projects where i wanted to work yeah in the sort of you know the sort of the uh, sort of prime locations in west london mm -hmm. went through uh the internet and kind of started collating a long list of estate agents and just started cold calling yeah and actually kind of wanting to build those relationships up with estate agents and i mm -hmm. suppose when you think about it in the larger context of buying a house and doing work to it and increasing value to a property um estate agents are really kind of they come before the architect in many cases because someone's just bought a house they don't know where to look for an architect. The first port of call is often to ask an estate agent. Yeah. So what would you, how would you kind of develop those relationships? How would you advise an architect to um, develop a relationship with an estate agent? What should they be looking for? Well, I think, um, I think there's, there's um, an opportunity in that, it's, you know, architects want to be working with the progressive estate agents, the estate agents today that appreciate that, how they practice needs to change mm. and those that do change are going to flourish and do very well and those that offer multiple services and, and, and information to the community as a whole and it's worth architects reaching out to the industry uh, there's many opportunities in cold calling walking into estate agents meeting up with large corporate high street independents family-owned companies as well as attending the numerous estate agency events that happen these days on right. a weekly monthly quarterly yearly basis regionally nationally what type of events are they so there'll just be events educational events training events um, events held by uh, governing bodies um, that are all looking to grow the industry and support the industry mm. um, and and be willing to speak and, and and put themselves forward to explain what an estate agent would benefit how an estate agent would benefit by knowing a what an architect does in, in 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 literal terms how it would benefit their clients and how it could benefit them as an industry to offer the services of an architect yeah um, because it's all well and good you know the the um young enthusiastic estate agent taking the the professional couple round to to their 
potential dream house and, and explaining to them that, you know, they could build a two-story extension here and a glass roof there and remove pillars here and, and, and turn it into this wonderful space. But when you're 35, 40 years old and being told that by a 21, 22 year old, there's something missing, you know, yeah. what's not missing is when that 21, 22 year old says, you know, I've got the details actually of a great architect yeah. who has told me about, you know, being able to create fantastic spaces in this area with these types of houses. Would you like to speak to them? Um, and architects, there I say, becoming a little bit more available, you know, yes. to the community. Um, and, and obviously there's a, a you know, business sense that's required, like all businesses. And I don't want to be going out spending hours and days uh, giving lots of great ideas to potential customers who then go off and let their local builder do it for them. Yeah. Um, so there's something in how they model their businesses to look at. But there's there's definitely a big correlation, uh, a big uh, opportunity for that relationship to 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 grow and, and that network to to forge a bit stronger. I remember you saying to me before about actually architects might have a lot more success perhaps with some of the more independent estate agent firms than opposed to some of the more uh, corporate franchises. Why, yeah. why is that? Well, I think that um, like any business, um, the larger a business is, the more difficult it is to get any big decisions made, referrals, who they're speaking to. Uh, and I think that that is one of the, the, the beauties, one of the benefits of having small independent companies that can make a decision to network with, uh, affiliate with mm. uh, different companies. Um, and you're going to get a lot uh, quicker traction by going into smaller independent one, three, five, ten branch companies um, explaining what your services are. And traditionally, those companies will cover specific areas yeah. within a small locale that that, that um, an architect can become a specialist in. You know, so they may be a specialist in d uh, development of certain type of properties, but then they get within the local area they yeah. become uh, a specialist in. Um, and I think the 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 journey to becoming known as that local expert, that person that you know, when people go around to their house and they say, "Wow, look what you've done here," people will say, oh, "Yeah, we, we we couldn't have done it without." that architect you know you, you need to speak to this person you know this guy this woman they're the person who really nailed it for us mm. uh, and similarly the opportunity in that oh where did you get them well we got them from our estate agent you yeah. know um so there's a just this huge benefit for, it, uh, for both parties it's really amazing actually because it gets me you know thinking about how important it is to establish a, a property team if you like, yeah. of different property um, professionals yeah. to be able to be in regular conversation with them, mm -hmm. to be regularly networking with other property professionals, listening, understanding what it is that you're after. Um, and, you know, because I, I can pass referrals back and forth and it's, that starts to be a very powerful allegiance. Definitely. And and I think what's what's really interesting for both industries the the architectural industry and the estate agency industry is that you know there's a big shift going on in the economy at the mm. moment and, and one thing that we're clearer on in the southeast is that generally there are probably lesser sales going on at the moment people are moving property less the cost of moving is has gone up significantly in the yeah. last couple of years and people are now thinking well rather than going to that first family home get our three five years there build up some equity and move on they are now thinking let's get that home how can we make this home last 10 15 years and in walks the architect yeah you know in walks the architect and and, and paints the vision and paints the picture of how you can make this house be your 10, 15 year, 20 year journey. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and, and it's the agent's responsibility, you know, they're that person influencing people's decisions um, to say, would, would you like a chat with somebody who I know has done some work around here and, and you know, turned 1500 square feet into two and a half thousand square feet with all these other features, mm. you know, lifestyle features that people are looking for. And it's also very interesting because I know from my experience working with clients, I'll often, 
you know, we'd talk about, you know, we could do an extension here. And obviously the conversation that architects traditionally will avoid is talking about cost and talking about how much value this will add. And I often, particularly in my early days of practice, would say, well, we could do an extension here, but you need to go and talk to an estate agent really to determine how much value that put an extension on the property will will be. And that kind of opens up a a good partnership there mm-hmm. because this you know how you value a house quantifiably in terms of like you know uh, how much a house will cost and how much value you can bring to it in terms of a renovation or extension this is where architects and estate agents can be very very complementary in that sense yeah well I think that that um, most estate agents mature experienced agents which are the ones who are normally out doing the valuing Mm. um, are aware that anything designed property wise whether it's the the entrance porch the the conservatory off the back or the you know the 40 square meter open plan kitchen dining reception all of those things which have design built into them have a huge impact on value. Yep. Um, and and there is this this correlation between um, the architect going in and, and and doing the work and the and the estate agent coming in and, and maybe even doing a little bit of work with them supporting what the architecture is saying. Yeah. And together um, boosting their position in the market, boosting who they are in the market, and 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 how the community listens to them. Yeah. And how do you, kind of, kind of leads on to the question of, of how does an estate agent determine the value of property? Um, <laughs> it's a great question. Um, I guess the, 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 the idea is that they... Um, well, the, the reason why I ask that question is obviously because as an architect, it, I can struggle sometimes in being able to quantify, you know, um, you know, I can talk about the soft elements of design hmm. and the quality of life and how it will uplift you and you yep. know, beautiful design. But when it comes down to like something hard and tangible, hmm. how do you go about? Well, I, I, I think there's a, a couple of things to say on that. So, so agents, what agents should be doing is um, when they value property is they should be looking at comparable properties, not that all properties compared to another property, but similar type properties in the vicinity. They should be looking at their, their their database of buyers. They should be looking at their recently agreed sales. There's lots of information available online um, of other properties that have sold within a short, medium, long-term history of the area. Um, and I think that that's one area that, that people are using to, to uh, agents are using to value property. But one thing may, may be seen as, as controversial is that um, I think in today's climate, some agents, if not most agents, aren't totally clear on what property values are exactly. Right. Um, and what agents have, have tended to do, they've tended to go out with the with the view when they value property that let's try and give the most positive valuation that will secure us the property to market um, and at the same time not leave us in a position that we can't manage that seller's expectation because we know that we're probably not going to sell it for that amount of money Mm. Um, and you know I think if agents were, were, were confident enough in their ability to use the systems and the tools that they have to know that those systems and tools will secure the best price that the market will allow them and work with owners to start at X price and then maybe alter to Y price if necessary, um, but to really sell the company and their services, the fact that they will work with that owner. And when an incoming buyer comes in, 
they can facilitate every need of that incoming buyer. If that buyer wants a quote for a, a rewire, yeah. they've got a fantastic electrician. If that, if that buyer requires a quote for a new roof, because I can see your roof hasn't been replaced in 15 years, we're the agent who've got the fantastic roofers locally. And if your buyer wants to knock out the back and the side wall and put another, you know, huge two-story extension right around the side, we've got the architect to do that too. Yeah. Now, with regards to sort of uh, touching on what, you know, that sort of sensitive area of architects, you know, being hit with that point where the, the homeowner says, so, you know, we invest all this money, what what do we get back? Well, well, I think that, you know, like anything, you know, when you, anybody who's willing to make a significant investment in their life isn't really, you don't want to be focusing on the, the, the immediate monetary. I think we all get caught up with that's the main thing that we all really are interested in. But what we really are interested in is the lifestyle benefit. Yeah. You know, what we're really interested in is having a positive lifestyle, having a, a, a home that really works for us, and then our life works. And if making money is the thing that's important to us, we'll probably make a lot more money because we've got a home that works for us. Mm. We've got a car that, that suits our needs. We holiday in places that give us what we need when we want time off. Um, so, yes, architects do need to a degree to, to, to balance uh, homeowners' expectations with regards to their return on investment for using their services, but not get too caught up in it, you know, because they're going to be clear, like any industry, what service are they offering? Yeah. You know, we're offering X service and what our clients get for it are Y. Mm. Um, and the cost is this, you know, that's that's the cost of it. Yeah. Um, and yes, people don't want to be throwing money away and it's very rare, although it does happen, that people do invest in their property and they don't immediately get that investment back. That's very, very rare. Uh, and you when some bad choices may have been made. Um, and it's probably, if the truth be sold, more market driven. Yeah. Uh, as much as anything else. It's interesting. I suppose it kind of starts to point to the the that a purchase or a sale is mainly driven by something emotional. Yes. As opposed to, you know, we can look at the numbers, we can say, yes, you know, you could do, you can add 15, 115 square foot here or 20 square meters over here. And that should equate to X amount increase in the value of your property, or you can get planning permission and that will increase. But ultimately a purchase decision I'm sure you have it when your clients, they will see something and they will literally they will fall in love with it. Yeah. Well, it's, um, it's a great point because only recently, in the last few weeks, in fact, um, I, was, I was contacted by a, a, a client, a, a, somebody who bought a house through me, a large house, just over you know, 2,000 square feet in, um, in London. And... Um, about a year ago when the market was probably at its peak um, and that house had not had any work done on it for about 40, 50 years. Yeah. They were a young family, young professional family with one young child at the time. And I remember when we, we originally came in to view the property, he was telling me of all his plans and he in fact did come back with an architect who told him about all these exciting and wonderful things they could um, and, and should do to the house. And, and, and he very much left me with the feeling even the day they exchanged and completed that those those were the plans and this is what was going to happen um and 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 you fast forward a year a couple of weeks ago i get a call from those homeowners to tell me that finally they are going to start some of the work but whereas the 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 small squaring off at the back of the house and and building out a little bit further where the current two-story extension was has now gone mm. they're now doing this huge huge extension and 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 conversion and and structural change uh, to the building with the view that you know this isn't going to be a five year stopgap this is going to be our 10 15 plus year um uh, home in london and um and and like you say you know sometimes you know an architect or anybody could be called into a property you know, because somebody is thinking of doing X and what happens is they end up doing X, Y and, and Z. You know, yeah. we've done it ourselves, you know, the somebody comes in and, you know, an electrician comes in to change, you know, a couple of lights in the hallway and then you start talking and, and before you know it, 
you've got down lights put in throughout the house and, and all the ceilings redecorated and some new upright radiators put in because they knew a plumber and, and that's the journey that we end up going on. Mm. Very interesting. And so the process of selling a house, yep. um, what, because it's very similar to the processes that architects will go through when they're selling their services. So for you as an estate agent, where do you see many estate agents going off or not being successful in the selling of a property? Um, well, I think that um, there are many successful estate agents out there who are, who are doing a good job um, and performing well. Um, I think that there are estate agents whose service level has not been great mm. um, and with a rapidly growing uh, property market over the last four, five, six years, the level of service has probably been less relevant. You could still get good results, whereas now the, the, the uh, market, the property market um, has changed, shifted slightly. Uh, it's probably more important today, coupled with the fact that there's less sales, it, it, it's definitely more important today that the, the, the service that the estate agents offer has to, has to alter. The, the um, experience of the estate agent, of being with the estate agent, has to alter. Um, and how the estate agents are viewed, they have to take responsibility for. You know, as agents, we've got to now look at what we're doing, the services that we're offering, and, and who are we in the local community? Are we just here to sort of make some money and go home at night? Yeah. Or are we here to become uh, uh, somebody that can be trusted, somebody that people look to and turn to when they're looking for recommendations and services? And what are, are we as agents, businesses, small, medium-sized businesses, giving back to our community, today and and in the long term mm. and i think any business um architectural uh, is is nothing different what what are they doing to to the local community and 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 who are their their clients yeah. you know who who are your clients and as a as an estate agent the the business model for many years has been get as many properties on as possible and you'll make the most money um and what some estate agents are starting to realize is is that that may not be the best philosophy why not look at who your type of client is you know look back over the last one three five years what sort of properties are you selling in which roads are you selling them what's the demographic of those people yeah because you obviously offer something to those people and why not become the absolute master and king of that area mm put everything in place to maintain that before trying to spread yourself out and just go for the very old linear model, get as much on as we can. And architects, like any industry, you know, shouldn't be too much different to that in the fact that they should probably look at what, what do they do really well, in which areas do they do really well, and who are their clients? You know, who are the people that that resonate with them, yeah. you know, that they appeal to, and, and, and be great at that. Be yeah. great with those people. Kind of getting your very focused onto a particular demographic. Yeah, onto a particular demographic, a particular sort of a client persona, uh, and, and work out who, who that is. Uh, and the companies that do that yeah. um, in the marketplace, general consumer marketplace, do very, very well. Um, and you can scale that up. And, and scale it down to a real local level, but it, it works. And how, how, what types of things do you suggest when you're in like your, your training of estate agents for them to be able to position themselves as this go-to person within a market? What kinds of actual exercises do you get them to do to develop what you're saying? Yeah, so we, um, so we run training courses for people to... Um, begin to understand the responsibility they have in their sector, in their marketplace, and the opportunity that the responsibility comes with. So the opportunity in um, dealing with people's 
often biggest financial commitment of their life. Yeah. You know, the, the, the huge opportunity that people want somebody they can trust. You know, they, they want somebody they can listen to. So you don't have to, they're already looking for it. You know, you, you don't have to sort of tell them you're looking for somebody you can trust. You know, they're looking for an estate agent that they can like. They're looking for an estate agent that they can trust. And if you're that one estate agent in your town, on your high street, in your community that people do, you're going to rise very quickly. You're not going to be the um, one in five potential high street agents which it's it's said at the moment is going to close in the next three years you know you're going to be the one in five that's definitely not and you're not even going to be the two three or four that may or may not Mm. um yeah what causes mistrust with an estate agent because obviously there's a a kind of a cliche of estate agents where people might not trust them they're kind of seen as salespeople. Um, what do you think causes that? I think that um, there's a lot of things which have caused that over the last 30 to 40 years yeah. um, that have not got much better over the last 10 to 20 years. And I think that there's lots of reasons and i think that the 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 listening for estate agents the way that the 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 consumer listens for estate agents is one of not trust be careful think about what you're doing um take everything with a pinch of salt you know um and 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 the various numerous reasons and examples of that only uh, what's really interesting, uh, open up the, 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 the huge space for something new. Mm. And, and, and while there's, uh, you know, the, 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 the birth of the online agent, yeah. um, I don't think they are, they are an estate agent as such. I think they're an alternative uh, to estate agents. I think high street estate agents are getting very consumed with what online agents are doing. I think they need to worry less about what online estate agents are doing because they're not doing what estate agents do. They're offering an alternative. Yeah. Um, and they need to focus on what they're doing, what they do, who their buyers are, and, and, and how they can um, position themselves to grow their businesses in the short, medium and long term future. And there are companies out there doing that. There are companies out there um, investing in their identity, their brand, who their business personas are, investing in their tech, how they're structuring their businesses. Yeah. Almost with um, less salespeople. Yeah. Um, and, and more media marketing, advertising, customer service, accounts managers, those type of businesses yeah. um, that are coming in, disrupting the industry and the communities that they're going into um, and the high streets that they're going into, they're doing very well very quickly. Yeah. You know, they're becoming part of the community. They're, 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 um, whether it's the local artists, the local NCD classes, you know, supporting the local charities, instead of throwing 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 pounds at the local PTA, do that, but go into the schools. Talk to the kids about what it's like to be doing work experience. Explain to them about if you're going to university, what you might want to do if you went into different sectors. You know, um, taking some of the kids and allowing them to come into your offices for a day. You know, and have some work uh, experience. And um, it's, it's really building up lots of different levels of relationship with your marketplace. Exactly, and 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 similarly, don't go to schools and give them three, four thousand pounds and tell the kids what they should and shouldn't be doing and what the work life is like if your client persona are not family people. Right. You know, if you sell to landlord investors who live five to ten miles away, find out who your clients are and do something that they care about in their communities. Yeah. yeah. I suppose that that as well, actually, when you have uh, an estate agent who's very clear on what their demographic is, for an architect also wanting to establish a relationship 
with them to ensure that both of your demographics are the same and that you've both got that kind of clear communication that you are, you know, you don't want to be necessarily going to an estate agent where you're focusing on uh, designing family homes, but this estate agent really, their sort of niche market is working with investors. Exactly. You know, somebody um, might sell or buy uh, a wonderful luxury home through a particular estate agent and, and find the experience to be uh, a very positive one. Yeah. And one year later decide to offset part of their portfolio and sell one or two of their smaller uh, one bedroom or studio properties um, and find it to be a very different experience um, because that agent was good at doing that one thing and this is not their forte. Exactly. And and, and that's one of the things that we are uh, training and educating estate agents to be as well as like all sales industries, like any, any marketplace, whatever it is, um, for people to understand the opportunity of customer experience, mm. you know, the huge opportunity of customer experience from the moment somebody rings an estate agent, rings a lawyer, rings an architect's company, the moment that happens, how is that experience? You yeah. know, whether you've got the property to offer them, whether you've got the appointment time that they want for you to come around and, and speak to them, but how you deal with them, you know, is a much, um, a, a very different approach to a long-term game. Um, you know, if somebody rings an estate agent and says, can I view this property, you know, looking for a house like that and we want to view it on Saturday afternoon at two o'clock, um, Unfortunately, there's still a lot of estate agents that, that just want to know what your email address is so they can get you onto their mailing list. And if you've got a mortgage sorted out, yeah. not they want to proof of funds sell you from financial services. Um, and, 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 you know, what they're missing is, is, that, is that fantastic chance to, to suddenly appear as, as somebody who really cares and, and wants to know about you as a person and what you're looking for and where do you work and what are your transport requirements and, and are you a family person and if so you know what are you looking for in schools and where are the schools and, and who works and who doesn't work and, and, and all these things which you know very quickly you know will begin that opportunity of trust building you know there's a huge amount of science and research now into um you know, customer interaction, mm. you know, uh, um, Apple's one of the companies leading the way, you know, they look at how many times people interact with their staff members in their uh, uh, shops, um, not that you'd ever think of them as a shop as such, yeah. um, before they buy something, how long they spend interacting with people. Um, and, and, you know, all, all companies now, you know, want to be looking at this information. They want to be looking at how many times do we speak to somebody before they will listen to us, before we all we need to do is turn around and say, oh, you should come and view this property. I know this one's for you. You know, how many times do they need to look on our website before we can just ring them up and say, come and view this property. I don't have any pictures or floor plans yet, but come and look at it. This is really important information uh, mm. that companies need to uh, start considering, all companies in all industries. And, and while it's a huge area, those that are companies which are starting now, just starting to look at those things, are growing. And what do you think is the future for estate agents? And what's your sort of path? I think the future for estate agents has probably not been as exciting as it is today than it has in, in many years. Um, I see these um, companies um, changing and transforming into um, parts of the local community, people that can be trusted, powerful brands, well organised, with, with strong core values that people can relate to. Um, and I think those companies, uh, much to the confusion of their competitors, seem to be doing very well, charging a positive level of fees, able to make a, a decent profit and grow their and grow their businesses. Mm. Um, and and our um, role in that at EA Life is to support those companies who appreciate that now is a time 
uh, for change. Now is the time to sort of start moving forward. Let's invest in our staff. You know, the, there's a strong argument for companies who invest in staff training. You know, the, the, the retention when people feel nurtured and cared for. Once they know we're going to put you on this course because we want you to do well in your job. We want to give you the tools to do well in your job. People will stay there yeah. uh, a lot longer, particularly if this is a, a, an ongoing process. And I, um, I think I, I read a statistic recently about the, the um, top uh, 100, FTSE 100 companies that invest X amount of money in staff training in all areas of the, of, of, of the business, on average get a rate of around 218% return of, of money per employer in, uh, 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 in within the company than companies that, that, that don't do that. Um, and that's what we aim to do. We aim to educate people, educate companies, train staff on the great opportunities of company of customer interaction, how we follow up, how we deal with people, and the responsibility of it is that it is of, of being in this day agent. Great, thank you very much, Richard. Yeah. Really, really fascinating, and, I, and I, I do think there is such, uh, you know, the, the relationship between architects, um, property investors, estate agents is, you know, creating those property teams of professionals around you is very, very critical. And also, what you've been talking about today about selling and developing client relationships applies across these businesses actually you know there's a good future there for building building teams definitely definitely i think uh it's an exciting time for for everybody in the property industry yeah. um, there's a lot of a lot of shift going on and and i think those that sort of appreciate that the the, the bigger and stronger the network they have it's only going to do their business and their and their sector and their industry good things Excellent. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So that is a wrap. Thank you very much for listening. And don't forget to go and book your tickets for the Business of Architecture UK live event happening on the 11th of October 2018 at UNI offices. Tickets now on sale. All the information is in the link below. Look forward to seeing you there. The views expressed on this show by my guests do not represent those of the host and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract bond or commitment except to help you be unstoppable.